And how appropriate of an introduction or a preparation of our hearts for communion that is. Because each and every week at Grace Bible Church, we follow Jesus' instructions to remember him until he comes. We remember him by doing what he told us to do, eating a piece of bread and drinking a cup of juice, physical, tangible, tasteable reminders of Jesus. Jesus is the eternal son of God, by whom and for whom all things were made. And the creator, the second person of the Trinity, took on a body of flesh filled with blood because without that body and blood, he could not die as the perfect sacrifice, the sinless in the place of sinners. The bread reminds us of his body in the cup of his blood given for us. And in Christ, in Christ alone, we can find spiritual blessing. We can actually find every spiritual blessing that God has for his own. Justification, sanctification, adoption, Redemption, new life, eternal life with him. But apart from Christ, apart from Christ, you're spiritually dead. In Christ is all you need. In Christ is every spiritual blessing. But apart from Christ, you're unable to please God. You're unable to save yourself. Apart from Christ, you will still face God, but not as father, but as judge. Apart from Christ, you're storing up God's righteous wrath and living a futile, sin-filled life. Apart from Christ, we could have no part in the blessings that he secured for his own. Apart from Christ, we can't have Christ. And this is why we ask that some of you let the bread and juice pass when it comes. This time of communion is only for blood-bought Christians. This time of communion is for those who are in Christ. All of the amazing blessings of the Bible are only found in Christ. And apart from Christ, you're dead in your sin. In your futile ways, you're storing up sin so that you and I, apart from Christ, are rightly called children of wrath. But in Christ, everything is different. In Christ, we are new creations. In Christ, we have every spiritual blessing. In Christ, we have forgiveness of sins. In Christ, we have holiness of life by the Holy Spirit. In Christ, we have knowledge of God, love for one another, and God. New life, eternal life with God, all to the praise of his glorious grace. Now, the only way to be found in Christ, the only way, is by despairing of your own works, your own righteousness, your own religious and moral efforts, and relying in faith on Jesus and him alone. You might come to church every week, hear this message over and over again, maybe even mentally assent to its truth. And it's still possible that you're judging yourself, saying, I'm relatively good compared to my neighbor's. I believe mentally in the message of the Bible, but you haven't actually despaired. You haven't turned from your sin to God in faith. And if that's you, you are not yet in Christ. So if by your own admission, you're not in Christ, uh, when the bread and juice come, please let it pass. Yet I pray that you won't stay in this position. Please don't leave here today without talking to me, whoever brought you, go to these doors on your left after the service. There's people to pray with you. Nevertheless, this time of remembrance is only for Christians. It can only be for those who are in Christ, who can remember Christ rightly in communion. But now, turning to Christians, sometimes during our communion meditation, we deep dive into a single aspect of Jesus or the implications of his life and death or resurrection. But I want to do something more big picture. 
as we remember him today, I, I simply want us to read together. We're going to read Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, and Ephesians 2, 4 through 9. These are two long sentences that speak of the blessings, just some of them that we have in Christ. I, I don't want you to get caught up in the details or stumble over hard to understand phrases, but simply marvel in preparation for remembrance at all that God has for his own in Christ. How this is completely apart from us, having nothing to do with us, grounded not in us, but in God for his purposes, for his glory, determined not in response to us, but for his eternal purposes before he made any of us. We're going to read Ephesians 1, 3. Pay special attention to the prepositional phrases like in Christ, in him, through him, and give God glory in your heart as you prepare to remember him in communion. When I am done reading, men, please just serve us. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things upon the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purposes, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. Skip forward to our next sentence, Ephesians 2.4. In contrast to our death apart from Christ, our sin apart from Christ, we read, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Men, please serve us as those of us who are in Christ. Remember Jesus together.